Hi there, it's John Moore here, and I am a shamanic teacher from Maine and in the U.S., if you don't know where Maine is, and I'm going to talk to you about shamanism and cultural appropriation. And this is a very important, um, a very emotional topic for some people. Um, this topic causes a lot of confusion for people, and so I want to clear a few things up, particularly about shamanism and cultural appropriation. Um, and I will define cultural appropriation as, uh, you know, and different people have different defi definitions, but it really is stealing or taking things from cultures that don't belong to you. Most notably, um, cultures that have been colonized. For example, my uh, most of my ancestors came from Europe and colonized the United States and had, um, you know, different relationships with the, the natives here a lot of the time, um, horrific, a lot, you know, uh, you know, I don't know my own family history, but, but certainly European colonizers, uh, genocide, the worst possible things you can think of. And so I have to be very, very careful when I teach shamanism, because there is frequently confusion with Native American ceremony and religious rites. I do not teach Native American religion. I don't know enough about it that I could teach it. I don't teach Native American spirituality. Some Native American tribes are shamanic. They have, you know, people who practice what we'd consider shamanism, and some are not. And so there is some confusion there about what we're doing. Now, a few years ago, I was teaching an introduction to shamanism class over a weekend, and we had a flyer, and the flyer had a picture of a, uh, a hoop drum or a frame drum. And um, this is a common shamanic tool around the world. And somebody with the very best of intentions contacted me, was very angry that I was stealing Native American culture and that I had no right to use a frame drum or hoop drum. This is uh, one drum that I have. This is a, a hoop drum made by the Remo company, a very good um, uh, synthetic one, right? Um, and it's true. Some Native American tribes use hoop drums. Let me show you something else. This is a frame drum. This is used in the Middle East. Hard to determine the difference, but it is a hide. This one happens to be synthetic, but traditionally it was a hide stretched over a hooped frame. Thousands and thousands of years. Let me show you another one. This is a baron. This is an Irish drum. A quarter of my ancestry comes from Ireland. It is a hoop drum with a hide stretched over the frame. So I think it's safe to say um, that these frame drums existed before U.S. You know, before the United States existed, and pro and well before um, colonization of the Americas happened. These have been around for thousands and thousands of years. They're tools that do not belong to any single culture, any single region. They exist all over the world. Um, and the same is true with shamanism. Shamanism as a practice has existed farther back than we can measure. Um, you know, we can see from cave paintings in Europe what we think is shamanic activity. We can see um, shamanism practiced by cultures that have been around for thousands of years, uh, different indigenous cultures. We have records of shamanic practices in cultures all over the world that might not, you know, that practiced maybe in rare form and, you know, passed down from family member to family member, but not widely practiced in the culture. An example of that is the practice of Sev. Sev is a Old Norse word. Um, which is shamanic journeying. And it was practiced primarily by women, sometimes by men. It was considered kind of unmanly um, at certain points in time. But it is shamanism. And it existed in Europe amongst um, the, you know, the people who lived there, who, by the way, weren't necessarily indigenous. Um, because if you're talking about the Arctic Circle area of, of that part of the world... The Sami people who still practice shamanism today were the were the indigenous culture. So Northern Europeans, um, Southern Europeans, because we see it in cave paintings in France and Spain and all over the place. So 
shamanism as a practice goes back before any culture that exists today. And it existed all over the world and still does. And honestly, it is everybody's birthright. And I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. Um, you, If you exist today, you had ancestors that lived in a culture that practiced shamanism at some point. Yes, um, my ancestors from Europe were converted to Christianity at the point of a sword when the Romans came, you know, when the Roman Catholic Church took over. But before that, many of them were, uh, you know, Celtic and they might have been druidic and druids probably were practicing shamanism but there certainly is celtic shamanism and that is still practiced today as well the word shaman so this is one that i hear as well um and i have heard the phrase you cannot use the word shaman because it only belongs to people who live in siberia um you know it's a little tough to argue who owns a word um but the word shaman has is a borrowed word into English, and it has been in English for ser probably several hundred years, probably about 300 years. Um, it definitely came into Europe um, in the late 17th century, in the 1690s to be exact, and the first written uh, version that we have is, is uh, from a, a Dutch person who had been in Siberia. And yes, so that from from that angle, the word came into Europe from the Tungus people of Siberia who speak Tungsic, where, um, you know, that's where that word shaman came from. However, did they invent the word? Um, and the answer to that is probably no, because the word shaman slightly pronounced differently sometimes exists in Sanskrit and Pali and Chinese in Akkadian and other Semitic languages. So the reality is that this word shaman um, as a meaning sp a spiritual functionality, one who talks to spirits, one who um, plays an important role in culture, um, and then in English, one who practices what we call shamanism, um, has been around probably before any modern language. Um, and by modern, I mean like in the past few thousand years. Um, it's probably from a long dead mother tongue that um, spread out through, throughout um, uh, Eastern Europe and Asia and, and that area. Um, but we don't have a better word for it in English. Um, you know, maybe it would be better if we had invented one. But the word has been around so long in English that it is, in fact, now an English word. And a good portion of English words are borrowed words. Um, you know, if you were to reduce um, all of our words to words that were strictly Anglo-Saxon words, our vocabulary would be cut by probably like two thirds, something like that. Um, even like the words for uh, days of the week and numbers and, um, you know, everything, every almost everything you can think of is borrowed from somewhere. English borrows from all over. We borrow from French and Spanish and there are even some... Um, words from Basque and even some words from um, Tagalog, um, right? The Filipino, like um, the boondocks, right? If you've heard of the boondocks, boondock is a Tagalog word that means mountain and dungarees come from India. And so there's a tremendous amount of bar borrowed language. Um, what happens though, is that people get really upset and their heart is in the right place when they feel like we are, we meaning, um, you know, people of primarily European descent who are like uh, stealing other people's culture or pretending to be from another culture that, that we don't belong to, particularly indigenous cultures who have been under colonial pressure for hundreds, if not hundreds of years, if not longer. Um, and, you know, uh, that might happen from time to time. I have called people out for, um, you know, I've seen people in Europe who are wearing, um, you know, Apache war bonnets doing ceremonies that they called shamanic initiations. And, um, you know, I'll call people out if I see stuff like that. Um, that's not something I would ever do. I have participated in Native American ceremonies um, when I have been invited and have the opportunity to do that, but I have also been to um, Jewish temple for um, services, weddings, and funerals, and um, I have gone to Catholic churches for mass, and I have 
I have experienced lots of other um, cultures' spirituality, but I do not represent myself as teaching those things. And that would be cultural appropriation. If I said, oh, I'm going to... Um, you know, I'm going to teach pipe ceremony and pass that on to people or um, sweat lodge or, you know, w whatever. Again, I don't know enough um, Native American spiritual or religious practice that I can even speak that much about it. But but I don't ever represent myself as um, doing what they do. I don't dress up in buckskin or wear feathers or any of those things because... I don't want, I mean, first of all, that, you know, I don't have the inclination to do that. And I don't want to represent my, misrepresent myself as being from a culture that I don't belong to and I don't have ties to. And I don't want to steal things from that culture. I don't practice cultural appropriation. Um, that's not, that doesn't stop people from sometimes accusing me of uh, culturally appropriating stuff. Um, but I can say that I am extremely careful about that. I am very, very careful about that. And I do not um, I do not practice or teach anything that has been stolen from another culture or that I'm, you know, pretending that I have a link to, um, you know, culturally. Um, the last thing I do want to say, though, is that um, there are some indigenous cultures um, you know, some Native American tribes and some Native American tribes, you know, not just from North America, but from Central and South America, who um, actually like to share their spiritual and healing practices because it is um, uh, in their beliefs, it is ethically or morally wrong to hold healing practices back from people who need them or who could benefit from them. And so they are very happy to share them with people who are, are willing to accept them, willing to learn. And there's no shortage of people because we can learn so much from indigenous cultures. They have survived in the harshest of circumstances, including colonization, including genocide. Um, you know, and, and there is a lot to be learned from them if we don't steal it. Um, so there is an ethical question about if I have the ability, if I belong to a certain culture and I have the ability to help somebody through uh, spiritual technology or um, spiritual healing or something, is it right for me to hold that back because of the circumstances of somebody's birth? Um, and that is a whole argument for another time. Like, if you know because of my parentage that i have absolutely no control over do i not have a right to some sort of healing or that sort of thing um it's very different than me stealing uh, you know cultural things of cultural importance and passing them off as my own or you know removing the ability for people to to practice their own culture which also happened um widely and uh, especially in the United States, we outlawed, uh, I, I don't know how this even, ha you know, how anybody thought this was okay, but um, we outlawed, you know, native use of language, native use of certain ceremonies, that sort of thing. Um, really, really crazy. And that is, that is absolutely terrible. So um, that is a little bit about shamanism and cultural appropriation. Um, it is a complex topic. I have written extensively about it. I have done a ton of research. I have talked to many people about it. I will not stop talking about it because I think it is. I think it's important, and I think people who are worried about it, um, their hearts are absolutely in the right place. We we need to protect, respect, encourage, support indigenous cultures. Um, we've lost so much. We've lost so much knowledge. We've lost languages. We've lost knowledge of medicines and plants and all kinds of things that would be really useful in um, in today's world. And um, that is a link, to, you know, links to the past that would be um, useful to, you know, useful to support for everybody. Um, not to mention just, you know, the, the horrific toll um, that has been played out on these um, on these cultures, on these whole groups of people. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very sad, but I would say that, 
Um, all of the shamanic practitioners I know personally, everybody I know who practices, um, particularly up here in Maine, is very, very conscious of that. We're very conscious of the environment. We're very conscious of the um, indigenous people around us, of their, of their um, you know, use of natural resources and the struggles they have been through to access things like traditional fishing and hunting grounds and um, having their water and land polluted and all kinds of stuff. Um, and we always try to be allies, um, you know, and I can, I, I can speak that broadly because literally everybody I know who is in this community, um, we supported the, um, you know, we have supported water protests and we have supported, um, you know, financially and spiritually and in all kinds of ways, um, and, you know, the indigenous people around us because, uh, because it's important and we are, from the shamanic point of view, we are all connected. And when any one of us is suffering, we are all suffering. So I hope that gives you a few things to think about. I am very happy to um, answer questions or have conversations with people. You can comment on this. Please subscribe to my channel. Come to my website and uh, is a very easy way to message me there. Um, and I uh, have an app uh, that is now available for Android. There's information on my website there. Um, I will talk to you all soon. I will be having lots and lots and lots of information um, about shamanism because I'm very passionate about it and I'm, I'm passionate for toward to people who want to learn about it, passing that on. Don't proselytize. I'm not pushing anybody into my stuff. Um, but if you're interested in shamanism, I am interested in teaching you about it. Um, I hope you are happy and healthy and I will talk to you real soon. Thank you.